Hey guys, welcome back to Phil Plays TCG, and today you have requested this for some time, and I am happy to finally deliver the man, the myth, the legend, Cody Wojcik, coming here with his starter coup Goku list, and uh, yeah, you guys have been bugging me about it for so long, and it's finally time to make it happen, so Cody, thank you so much for hopping on the show. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, I, trust me, the amount of DMs I get for this is pretty insane, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely, I bet. And I and please don't think I'm being serious, with, uh, viewers. That I, you're, you haven't bugged, you haven't been bugging me. I've been wanting to do this. I've just, you know, time is crazy. But uh, Cody was like, "Hey, let's do a deck profile." I'm like, "Yeah, you know what? Let's make it happen." So here we are. Uh, we're going to talk about Starter Coup and why it's the best red deck in the format if not the best deck in the format some might say i mean i'll die on that hill <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will i will die get burned buried and then forgotten on that hill but i will die on that hill well you know what hopefully you won't have to do that but we are going to talk about why the leader is, why do you think the leader is as good as it is i don't know we did that video not too long ago which honestly mm -hmm. probably was a couple uh months ago talking about starter coup and how we you said it was way better than you uh you seven goku so now let's let's talk about your updated feelings for the deck and i think honestly your opinion has only gotten stronger that this is the best red leader let's talk about why do you say red starter coup is the best leader in the game so aggro is defined by your ability to produce threats and generate value off of them incrementally um or mid-range uh and this deck does that better than any of the other red decks. So U7 Goku, while yes, he gives power like tr exponentially more as you build a board, one thing that he fails to do almost every time you play against him, and if you're a yellow Frieza player, you've probably noticed this, you'll fight against U7, he'll produce a couple of guys, you do your Rakum Ginyu play, attack all of his dudes, and he just lets them die. Well, that puts him in a situation where he can't reproduce his board, uh, or he has to reproduce his board in order to even fight you. This leader, has no such problem with that. He's able to defend his cards and play higher value cards uh, because he's not limited on res or restricted on what he's able to put in this deck. So he's able to work with a lot more powerful base power cards, uh, which means decks like yellow can't contest him as easily. Decks like green have a harder time defending. And essentially when you board an attacker in this deck, it's guaranteed to live multiple turns if their only means of removing it is combat. Okay. Okay, I, I can see it. And honestly, I have fun playing this deck. It's one of the... It's actually the only red deck that I have built at the moment. It's the one I put in the most amount of time in, as you have given me that inspiration to play it. And I, I really like the deck. I do have a lot of success with it. It's definitely on my rotation right now of what decks I want to bring to my locals. And it's it's a really fun deck. It, it really does. It's the most generically versatile red deck i think in this format i actually think it, it has more aggressive value than u7 as well because u7's inability to defend its board without conceding large quantity of hand or just getting themselves immediately behind the fact that we don't have like any cards that just play another attacker really hurts universe seven right now right um Beerus is a good deck. I will never say Beerus isn't a good deck. I think this deck is technically better uh, because it has a much better matchup into green due to the fact that it can at least gain some offensive value yeah. on its cards, unlike Beerus. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I think both red decks are good. I just think U7's the one that you just should not play right now, unless you're just a huge fan of Super Saiyan Blue. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know, uh, brief little rundown about the leader. Obviously, on its front side, basic uh, when attacking, draw. And when, you're, when your life is at four or less, you draw, awaken. The backside is the awesome, awesome versatility of this card is shown. Basically, once per turn, you can increase the attack power of one of your cards by 5k, that it can be used defensively and offensively. Unfortunately, it cannot be used on the leader, which I would agree that would be busted, but I think this is a very good ability for being able to defend your cards when your opponent swings equally at something on your board and you just give them a 5k boost for free that's that's free combo that's amazing and on yeah it's like you just gained a free card yeah exactly and then offensively you can if you're swinging something you're gonna make your opponent have to trash a card at the very least sometimes they might have to give up something bigger that they didn't want to get rid of 
Uh, for example, if they want to, if you're swinging 20 into a 20, uh, you give that card an extra 5k, that's 25 swinging in, your opponent's going to have to at least give away a 10k if they want to save it, which that extra 5k, it really matters in the long run. Oh yeah, they add up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, after since we got the leader talked about, let's, let's go over the list here. Let's see that spice. Okay. Let's see what the fans have been requesting for so long. All right, I'll just leave him up here on its cool energy marker and just pull out each card individually. So oh, we'll yeah. start with the one drop. I think that's the best place to start. And yeah. we'll just work our way down from cost. So I like the that. first card that we play it for is uh, four copies of Roshi. Uh, this is the life take Roshi. This is the um, tournament pack one. Uh, you basically activate main, one drop 10k, 5k power. That's not really super relevant, but uh, activate main, pick up a life. And then the next red extra card you play is reduced by one. That that particular portion of the effect the minusing of your extra cards almost never comes up uh mainly because there's only fun fact there's only two extra cards in this whole deck um and this card will not be used to power up it is instead used as an awakening tool and as soon as you get to four life and it flipped this is just 10k combo power okay. so that's pretty much why it's in here it's an awakener and you'll see we need to awaken very quickly because the faster we awaken the more we can get to getting the incremental value on our leader so Absolutely. that's why it's four of those uh, four of the next best one drop in red. I think this card is absolutely insane. Uh, and that is four one drop Whis. Uh This guy is one drop 10K, which actually does matter that he is a 10K. Um, he has activate main. You can choose one of your opponent's battle cards and deck five it. Uh, this comes up with a whole plethora of cards. It allows you to challenge 20Ks with your unawoke leader if you need to play this turn one against even red and they have a hard time removing it. Like if you go first in the red mirror and you drop this, they're awakened Roshi. They know it just dies if they play it. So sometimes they just won't play it. Um, <laughs> this card actually can do a lot of damage to a lot of decks. And fun fact, when you awaken, uh, this guy, he's a, he's a little 15K swing. So if you use him to neg a guy, or neg one of their 20Ks, you can just swing at one leader effect and threaten a 15 into their 15. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, you don't really use it for attacking as much, but it is a really, really powerful card. Combos with a lot of the other red cards to allow us to get kill thresholds on things we wouldn't normally reach. Uh, this guy plus an extra card will allow you to even kill the most horrifying four drop cooler. So uh, okay. important card. And are those cards uh, last... all super pre-release? Yes, these are this deck is essentially max rarity. Um, the only difference is I don't like using the ghost rare copy in the main deck when I'm taking it to locals. Ooh. So the secret rares are just going to be alts. But yes, these are all pre-release. Uh, and the only card in the deck that can't come pre-release or stamp besides the promo, uh, one drop draw Roshi. Uh, this is the worst card in the deck. Uh, you still have to play it, but it is the worst card in the deck. I only run this at three because it rounds out my one drop count. Um, Really good, helps fix a bad hand and hopefully turn it into a good hand. Um, gives you a reason to charge past five energy if you have a five drop in your hand and you want to go fuck this plus five drop. Uh, realistically, this card's really just there to fill out your turn three curve where you like have a three drop skillless, but you'd rather go two drop promo and then this. That actually gives, nets you more combo power because you have to keep the 10k in hand plus draw a card, which is typically going to be better than just going slam the three drop. So this is just there to round out curve. It's not really there for anything else. Fixes bad hands, rounds out curve. It's decent. Okay. Makes sense. And then that's all of the one drops. Now, the, the there's a lot of two drops in the stack. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but most, most played slot. Uh, one of the best cards in the game, I, I dare say it's actually the best two drop. I prefer this over Frieza, uh, is Hit. So oh, yeah. Hit is deceptively good. A lot of people really thought this card wasn't that great when the game was first like being revealed. They were like, it's super boring. And sometimes boring effects are best. So for a simple, you know, it's a self-awakener. It's a 20K, which is, you know, normal stat line for a two drop uh, on top of that it negs things when it swings that can put things in kill threshold that can allow you to contest cards that you wouldn't normally so if they have a 25k and you swing hit at it you make it a 20k hit threatens it then your leader threatens it and then anything else you have that's 20k threatens it this card is absolutely fantastic and very often game warping in the first two turns of the game oh, yeah. um it's, it's just a monster of a card you, like you can't appreciate it until you've played with it u7 still has like the, this card is so good that u7 goku has to like give up playing u7 names to board this card that's how good this card is oh yeah i, I don't understand anybody saying that card is bad like yeah i've i've crazy. seen people like contest it when the when the game was first being revealed and say oh, this card's okay. insane second best two drop in the game actually goes to red as well and it's this guy uh, specifically because he's the only card in the game that is overstatted for his cost. So as a two drop, you get a three drop value in stats. 
and it is an absolute monster to try to contest this card um, once you're awoke. It, you basically have to use hard removal on this or it's not getting off the board. So Cooler is good against it because obviously he just kills it, but uh, anything else, it's very easy to defend this against like other red decks, they don't minus it. Against leaders, they have to give up a card to even try. Uh, it also hits Broly for only a measly two energy, and it hits Broly for a, a 10k because you're going to leader effect this to make it 30. Uh, this card so is cool. super good, super super good. Uh, there's a reason this card's like 16 to 15 bucks right now. I, you know, if you don't own them, it, they're worth grabbing if you really want to play red. I think you kind of have to own this card just because it's an overstated two drop. 100. percent I have two. I still need to get two <laughs> before I can really play red competitively. Oh yeah, it's it's a really good card. You could you could work with three. I don't I, I can see some arguments for going to three of this, but I, I honestly I'm gonna keep playing four of it because one it's Goku and he's the goat. Yeah, exactly. um, next to drop we got Krillin, Self Awakener. There's gonna be games where you don't want to attack to get to take life and you want to actually be able to like uh, starve your opponent for a turn. This card gives you the versatility to do that. Why Krillin over 17? Simple fact, it's two drop. It's literally at it's two drop, swings for the same rate or same number as 17. Uh it has the same combo power as 17. The only thing is it's harder to, to defend. But if you're trying to awaken, you want to be able to you want to be able to flow out your energy a lot better. So this is going to be a two drop, so you get to save energy and do other things. Okay. Um, Solid. And the other the other three the other three of two drop is Fua. Uh, this card is deceptively good. Um, it's not that this card is good by itself. Okay. It does allow you to get reach on cards that you wouldn't normally get. What he does is when you play him, you just choose a guy and neg 15 it. Uh, what he does is he combos with other cards in the deck that will allow you to have kill reach on cards you'd have no shot of killing right. or you can play it minus 15 something swing your leader at it and combo 10 uh so this card will allow you to contest stuff with your, just your leader if you absolutely have to right uh, so it's a really good card but the, the main reason we play it is for the increased kill threshold on the three drop sr yeah. and the only extra card i'm playing and this is this is like a, not a point of contention but you can you can change this uh i play two awakening the super saiyan so oh, okay. this this card is really good. Uh, if you have if you're on three energy and your opponent or if you have four energy and your opponent went uh, four drop cooler into you, you can just go pay one for Whis, pay two for this and then just Whis effect and the cooler is dead. Uh, this card allows you to turn the 35 Ks into 10 Ks. So your leader can swing into them, making your opponent be like, well, I have to just let this go. It's not worth defending. Um, huh. For two energy, the fact that this allows this combos with I'll just I'll just spoil it now. For five energy, which is normally what you would do with the Fua combo, uh, the only reason we don't play more of this because it doesn't have combo power and we play like 20 10Ks in this deck. But this is a normal combo that you'd do is you'd play Fua into the three drop, and this will remove any five drop in the game, like straight up, because this is uh, neg 15 and this kills 20K, so all the 35Ks and 30s they just get cooked. Uh, okay. This will kill Broly. Th this kills Broly. This combo right here, for the same amount of energy, you can kill Broly. The only <laughs> card in the game that survives this is the Secret Rare. Every other card dies. So that's um, amazing. The, but you got to think about the more like the other uses for this. This allows you to just swing into cards. So don't be afraid to minus something and then just attack it a bunch. Yeah. If you're trying to win advantage, that's a really good idea. Hmm. Uh, and uh, just like the SR, we are playing four of it. It is. It is insane. The only argument to not play four of this card is if you're playing the T.O.P. variant of the deck. Uh, that's like the only argument because the reason you play this at four is because you have to see it against yellow. Um, if you do not see this card against yellow, you will lose. Um, th this card single handedly beats that color. So you must see this card. OK, uh, if you, uh, but you, between this and Frost, like you have some sort of way to fight back if you don't get this, but get Frost. But if you don't see these. These are really what separates the red matchup and the red matchup into yellow and makes red favored into yellow. Um, it, I can't really say anything else about this. It's got an insane stat line. It's a self awakener. Uh, it's really hard to deal with once it's boarded, unless it's again hit with hard removal. And that's like what this deck does: is you stick like one or two twenty five k's and just beat your opponent to death with them over the course of the game. Right. And if they're green, they can't really do anything about you boarding multiples, so they have to play droids into this. And that's why the the next slot before drops are going to be a lot more important. But this card's insane. One of the reasons to play red is to play this card. Um, I honestly think that this is straight up the best card in red, like overall. Uh, between this and like any of your minus effects, you can clean. Any card on the any card in the game, with the exception of the secret rare, without needing like too much of an investment. Yeah. Uh, and that, when I say the secret rare, I mean the green secret. It's fifty k. You, you yeah. don't need to clear that, right? Just go face. Exactly. Um, but yeah, card's insane. Play four of it, unless you're on top. You can get away with three because top mitigates yellow a little bit, and that's kind of why you have to play four of this otherwise. Gotcha. 
Uh, and then the last three drops I play, I play three vanillas. Again, round out combo power. I play 20 10Ks in the stack. Uh, these are the best for the slot. Uh, 25K stat line is really good. If you do have to board it, uh, again, it swings 30K into Broly. It's 30K in defense, very hard to remove. Three, three drop also means that uh, Cooler cannot kill this. So this is actually much safer to play into yellow than the two drop Goku. I will oftentimes against yellow charge those Gokus in favor of playing higher stat line cards that are higher cost. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then like there's a three cost 25K Piccolo that also has 10K stats, right? There is, but unfortunately, my friend, he doesn't come free release stamps. So he's oh, not stack. damn shame. Yeah. Uh, and then the last three drop is uh, Jordan Markle. Shout out to the GOAT. He convinced me to just go ahead and stick on this card. It hasn't really come up in my games personally, but I have been in situations where I've considered playing it. Um, this is really just to give you another backup strat against yellow. If they do go wide and you don't hit the three drop Goku, yep. you at least have something to kind of fall back on so you don't just lose. It, if this is boarded against the Raccoon Ginyu package, uh, Frieza, like not mid, this doesn't do anything against mid range Frieza. This card is completely dead in that matchup. But against the standard Raccoon Ginyu deck, if you don't see the three drop Goku or this, you're probably losing. Uh, but the fact that you have this means that if you don't see the three drop Goku, you have a set, you have a fail safe fallback. And uh, yeah, if this sticks and it's not removed, you just win the game. Yeah. Like straight up, you just win the game. I, I, that card's really disgusting and I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then on to the four drops. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, four Skillless Chompa. Uh, there's a four drop Frieza that I also run. I'll just put him in here. Poop. Uh, he's not pre release stamps. So that's why he's one of. Uh, Chompa is pre release stamp. Again, four drops oh. actually the line that you want to try to get to. You want to slam one of these as soon as humanly possible. Uh, and by that, I mean you want to play four drop. It doesn't necessarily have to be these because you could just play one of these guys. Okay, so Ooh. this is the best card. This is the best four drop we have in red. Uh, Red's four drops are actually the worst slot that we have, period. Uh, not even close. Like, Gohan is really mediocre in this deck. The 25k stat line sucks. Uh, like, it sucks for a four drop. It's a good stat line, but it's bad on a four um, because anything can contest it uh, once you're reaching the point where you're playing the four drops. So when you're playing four drops, you know, Yellow's playing four drops, and then Cooler's automatically tied with your leader effect on Gohan. Right. And that's not a situation you want to be in. So you got to play the 30ks. Uh, all of these are good. If you board any of these against green before droids come out, you're probably fine because leader effect plus a 10k blocks these if, blocks for these if droids swing at them. Uh, and if you get to get back into your turn with any of these on the board, it's really good. This card is insane. Uh, anytime I you board this card into a 20, like if your opponent has a 20k rest mode card, this card's actually just the most sick card in the game. You just play it. It's like go to five, all right, 35 and you're five. And they're, they're just taking a damage at that point. It's, it's right. way too much to defend. Um, card's really good against green, helps you close out the green match against Gohan, especially if you somehow couldn't remove Selku, despite having a million cards that do it. But this card's really good into green because, you know, they're often going to have a guy on board, you'll minus it, minus another effect, and it'll be oftentimes much easier swinging at that than it will be attacking their leader, with Broly being at base 25 and Gohan being 35 whenever he wants just for existing. Right. Uh, Secret Rare is good. If you don't own it, there isn't really a replacement for it. Um, I, I would just play like more skillless just for the combo power right. um you, you do want this card because it's just it's it is your best four drop like there's gonna be times that you just you're not playing it to kill like something on their board with its attack you're playing it to, like click an active mode card and then swing at their face or to help get reach on killing a card so for example if they have like an active mode 20k that you need remove but you can't kill it with like um an attack you can just go like Whis one drop plus this, and you can cook a 20k on their board if you absolutely have to. Right, that, that's awesome. I just had to do a double check to see how many I have, and I have two, so that'll work. Perfect. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you'll need. Uh, next five drop. It should be no gas. It, it, we we play. We, it's the best. It's the best five drop. Like Beerus sucks. Uh, Beerus is like good sometimes, very rarely, but you need double strike. It's too important to not have. Um, if you don't have double strike, you can't close out games against Broly. Oftentimes the way you win against Broly is you get them to two. Uh, then you make them whittle down their hand defending everything else. And then you slam this guy with like a bunch of 10Ks in your hand and it just kills them. Uh, that's like 90% of the ways that you kill Broly is with this guy double striking them. Uh, go on, same thing. Eventually this guy just gets in when they're at two life and you combo your hand and they die. Yeah. Uh, you normally will have to grind go on a little bit more. This deck is fine in the green. Like, it's perfectly fine. You can beat Gohan, you can beat Broly, and you can molly -wop droids. Droids just, unfortunately, with no defensive utility on their leader, they just kind of get bullied by this. Oh, no. Um, 
yeah, the the stack's very good. Like it's it's very good. Um, yeah, this this is the best five drop for red. You can you could make an argument to play like Beerus like over this, but you need to see this card. That's why it's at three. Uh, right. You don't play four of it because it kind of clogs. At three, you intend to maybe get one, and once you see one, every other copy you get can be charged because uh, you're just going to hold this to to one shop them essentially when they get to two life. Gotcha, gotcha. And the last card is going to be uh, for my super combo. Uh, you guys thought I didn't play one. I got you. Tricked you. Uh, no, there's <laughs> yeah, super combos in here. <laughs> I play Kaba over Shin because I'm not playing any of the searchers. And Kaba has a judge stamp, which makes him significantly cooler than Shin. Also, yep. look at that. It's just nice. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to play super combos. There are some things you can change about the stack. Uh, cutting super combos, not one of them. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, like, if you wanted to make some changes, if you wanted to play the searchers, you can. Like, the when I'm saying the searchers, I mean the one cost extras for U7, U6. Uh, the U6 one's probably a little better overall because it grabs hit. Um, it grabs your super combo. Honestly, if I was changing the search, if I was, like, playing the searcher, I'd probably just play the U7 one overall because I really just want to see the three drop every game. Yeah. And that's just me personally. Uh, but I just don't care about that. It's not that big of a deal to me. Okay. Uh, four drop wise, you can... Like I said, if you don't have the secret rares, you can just play more skillless. I'm not going to recommend you play the four drop Gohan. I just won't do it. I have a friend who who's a diehard fan of that card. He's like, I play two of it no matter what. You know what, man? More power to you. That card sucks. In Beerus, <laughs> it's great. Four of all day. In Starter Coup, don't play it. I think it's bad. Uh, you can play three drop Beerus, the crit Beerus. That's actually perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to choose to do that over um, the skillless, I think that's perfectly fine. It does lower your combo power quite a bit, but these can just be Beerus's if you'd like, just so you have access to some crit in the deck. They also allow you to get aggressive with your um, your one drop Whis, which is a really funny play you can do because you can have Whis on the board and you can go three drop Beerus, swing at them with crit, plus five the Whis, so he's 15, then swing at them with Whis and leader effect it to 25, or to 20, which is really funny. So mm. Whis can get in there for some damage if you're playing the Beerus. Uh, okay. The extra card slot, you can make it Mafuba. Mafuba is very good. Uh, it allows you to use Mafuba plus the three drop to kill the 35Ks. And that's really that's really their main point is to be able to deal with Golden because if Golden's boarded, it's answered, they don't have another one, you probably win the game. Um, honestly, I, I, there's not a whole lot I'd change about the deck. I think it's perfectly fine as is. There's like minor things you could do to it, little, little minor differences. Uh, okay. TOP Arena build's even fine. Uh, this is just the variant that I've had the most success with personally. And after I don't know how many games of playing uh, red, this is this is kind of what I've settled on. OK, solid. So basically, from what I've gathered is this deck doesn't really have like doesn't have a problem into most decks. Now, is there a, a deck that is that does kind of scare you a little bit? Like, Is there a deck that you're just like, ah, that's going to be more annoying than anything? Is there any type uh, there, of deck like well, that? It's it's probably the same deck that everyone is, and that's, you know, high roll from Goku Black. Like, if Goku Black just hits the nuts and does everything on turn, like, three or four, it's really bad. Uh, <laughs> but you can... Luckily, we're on this card, so we can still kill the Goku Black. So... Right. Um, so we actually have a way to deal with that if that does happen. It's just not... It's just unlikely that we'll see it, like, that early. Uh -huh. um, but typically, no. No, there's... This deck can actually fight every deck. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with every deck. I think it's favored into every green matchup, uh, not by much, but slightly. And I think it is at least bare minimum even with Frieza. Um, I, I personally, personally, I feel it's favored into Frieza because access to Frost and three drop Goku is just too much for that deck to handle. Right. Um, but, you know, some people will tell me that it's not. I, I just think that it absolutely is favored. Uh, the ability to defend your stuff against Frieza's swarm of 20Ks is oftentimes just too much. And even if you use the leader effect and they attack one of your twenty, your like they attack your hit twice, that's fine. Hit basic, you basically got a plus one for this, and then hit got to block a second attack. So you right. get to conserve him that way, or you can just keep defending it. You know, it's fine. You got to go plus one defending. Sick, I love it. Um, well, perfect. Well, I hope that everybody at home who's been wanting this deck list uh, got what they wanted. The, I mean. I really like this. Like I'm, I'm looking at my build of this right now, and I'm like, okay, um, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna change this. Um, it, uh, this is actually really cool. If anything, I might actually play this build for my locals this week, because this is the first tournament we're doing in a month, almost. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it won. It won my locals on Saturday, and it went completely undefeated. So, what were your uh, matches? Pretty strong. 
Uh, I wasn't the one playing it since I was judging. I had somebody else play it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. even better. Can't play if I'm judging, but I mean, he played um, what? Uh, Goku Black, then, then just like a sea of yellow and like just three Frieza matches right after. Mm. So, <laughs> I mean, Rough. and he went undefeated. <laughs> so, and it was the first time he's ever played red. I was like, here, you can play this. And he's like, okay. So it kind of tells you how strong the deck can be. It's really, really good. Um, it's my favorite deck, my favorite leader, Barna. And I just, I'm a huge fan of normal Super Saiyan Goku. And that's kind of what made me decide I was playing this. I dig this. All right. Well, I think we'll probably wrap this up since we got a good breakdown of the deck, its pros and cons, uh, how to play it. I think this is this is really cool. This this has got me hyped to play this leader. No doubt about that. Um, any shout outs you want to make before wrapping this up? Uh, shout out to the group chat, uh, Giancarlo, uh, yep. Ryan, uh, everybody in there. Not Kevin, though. Kevin, you suck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout outs to Eric. Uh, shouts to Tarmo Tim, who's actually been, he's a new up and coming, uh, yep. Dragon Ball Fusion World streamer and, uh, content creator. And, you know, he's shockingly for the short amount of time that he's played this game. He's very much, and I'm not saying this just cause he's a Goku, a starter Goku stand boy. I'm saying uh, this because yeah. he's like, he's yeah. actually legitimately a good player. Like actually okay. it was fun to watch his like growth and like his realization of how the game works coming from a magic background. Um, that's fair. I actually. talk with him quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's very good. And his insight, you know, still, still is coming from like that magic. So he won't think of things the same way that we do, but definitely a content creator. You guys should check out. Yeah. I'll put his link in the description. Absolutely. Uh, we've chatted a little bit too. Uh, he commented on my, uh, one of my videos talking about how I'm his go-to channel for any Dragon Ball Fusion World news. And I was like, damn, that, that feels good. <laughs> that, that feels like I was humbled. <laughs> like in a, hey, in you a should way. feel really good because he said if not for you, he would have never found out about the game. Wait, for real? Yep. Oh shit! Well, damn, Tarmo Tim, your your description, your your channel's going in the description. Shout out, go everyone, go follow him. He seems really cool. Uh, watched a bit of his streams. Haven't had a whole lot of time to watch streams lately, but uh, yeah, go check him out. He's a super cool dude. Everyone. Thank everyone, you know, type in a fun comment down below. Talk about how awesome this deck is, how awesome Cody is for taking the time to sit down and talk with me, go over this and um, go hit that like and subscribe button. Because if you're watching this and you made it to the end, you know, you like this content. So why not, you know, see more of it and you know, how oh, you can and really quick. What? <laughs> Before we continue, let's make sure we put a link in the description to a DBS deck planet link, a link for this deck so people can actually like Ooh. physically see it because that would help people because, you know, I did kind of just lay out the cards all. Oh, yeah. Here's a four up. Here's a four. Up. It is 50 cards, by the way. Just so you're aware. Straight 50. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure I put that in the description. Uh, but yeah, we'll call it a day. Uh, thank you so much, Cody, once again, for giving the people what they want. Uh, I'm starting to think we should call you The Rock because you seem to be the people's champion when it comes to this game. <laughs> I just want the entire player base to get better. And I think that the some of the other content creators are less willing to share uh, with the entire player base than others. And I would rather be supporting the ones that are more open and willing to grow the entire player base as a whole. Hell yeah. That's all we want. We want growth. We want people to be good. I convinced a bunch of my One Piece locals players to come in and play Dragon Ball. And now they're actually loving Dragon Ball more than One Piece at the moment, uh, which has been fun. Been super awesome to get more and more people into this game. And uh, yeah, it's I cannot wait for set two. Set two is going to be so much fun based off the reveals. Uh, we got about a month to go almost until the reveal to the full release. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, that is that will do it. We've uh, got this video going on almost 30 minutes. So thank you to every single person who's checked out this video. Like I said earlier, you should hit that like and subscribe button. We'd love to have you here. Uh, check out the Discord. Check out all of my other social links. And uh, thank you, Cody, once again for coming on the channel. You are the, the absolute goat. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care. See you, dudes. <laughs>